This afternoon, we're listening to the live testimony of two beloved uh, friends who have traveled here in order to tell their stories, give their testimony to this Judicial Commission of Inquiry. We welcome them greatly. Ronald Bernard is joining us from the Netherlands today, and we're very grateful to you for coming here, Ronald. Most people in this room will know who you are. You've had very considerable press um, coverage, especially through the, uh, the alternate, uh, alternative media in the last uh, a year or two. Um, a brief uh, background, Ronald uh, Bernard is an entrepreneur and former elite Dutch banker who rose quickly through the ranks in global high finance and then turned whistleblower uh, to the satanic ritual abuse atrocities that he discovered taking place behind the scenes in the corrupt systems. Thank you for being here. Well, you're very welcome, Sasha, and all the other people as well. Thank you for being here all in presence. Uh, I see you all in a way like representing all the citizens of this world. You are just a few here if you compare it with the 7 billion, but you are all representing the human being on this earth. And after having my hell ride one hour with my sister here, it's quite heavy to start, I have to admit that. I didn't prepare anything, I just go with the flow. Um, thank you for the introduction. It is what it is. I was on both sides as a child and later as a, a perpetrator. Um, I have to start with the birth, the birth of a human being. The awareness I share is the awareness I have now. It's sometimes maybe a bit confusing later on when I start to express myself and explaining things, giving a testimony about things, because I do it with the awareness I have now. And most of the things I was not aware of in the past. I discovered things step by step. But to begin with the birth, this is a universal thing. It is when we are born, I start to discover we are so connected with the source of life, what I call the creator of heaven and earth, we are pure. We are manifesting the God, being the son or the daughter. We are the light. On the moment we arrive, everything is fine. Okay, there are always exceptions that you can say, okay, there is a malfunction in the body, nobody is perfect and so on. But the light is there, it's manifesting. Then we enter the program of this world. And this is not a new program, it's a very old program. It's a Luciferian program. That means they start to raise us up through our beloved father and mother, if you have one, in a program to end up in the slavery system we have, because we are just a source to use. We are the value, we are the light, and they want to suck it completely, like screwing the orange completely sucking everything out, throw it away. Once they call this the American system, the American system, you consume it and you throw it away. And that's what's happening on this planet. It's going through your parents, they love you, they want to take care of you, they put you in the vaccine programs with a lot of chemicals to damage your immune system, it's in the um, school system, it's everywhere to be the perfect slave. There is another thing, and that's more about my story. When I was uh, born, just a bit later on, I started to discover that I was born in a family with a father and mother who were heavily damaged 
during the Second World War. So these were not real developed people, they were heavily damaged. And because of that, my, uh, my first nine years on Earth were that heavy that I start to realize that if there is a heaven and earth, I was born in hell. Because it was not heaven on earth at all. It was hell. My mother was not able to defend me. And my father figured out that he co couldn't hit my mother. She was so heavily abused and damaged that it doesn't matter for her. So to hit her, I was the one, the firstborn. Because he knew that my mother, for the first time, was able to love a human being, and that was me. So the best way to hit her was hitting me. So brutal that I start to copy his behavior. I was in that period of my life, I was, it was not a common expression, but I was one of the first terrorists on earth, beating up everyone on school. I was really terror. That was picked up by organizations who protect children. So there was, was a investigation coming up. And they start to discover my situation and they, um, by court, they put me in, a, in a, a place where they protect heavily damaged children. It was a Catholic accommodation and they really, really love children. And they didn't have Vaseline to make it a bit more smoothy. This is how I start to discover what it is to have sexual um, games on me. I, I didn't know what sex was. And um, they did this for two years. Very intense, not only with me, but it was with all the children. And the first was, year was most hell. And then you get this fuck up with yourself as well, because after being uh, through all this pain and tortures with, well, I, I, I save you the details. It's, it's, well, if you know everything, you, you really like to kill humans. And I was going in that way, in that direction. Um, to, to survive all this, the first 11 years and the last two years was really screaming to go back to the other hell. I, that one was actually better than the, the second hell. Um, one of the mechanisms we have in our human being, being the light, is on the moment you are going through hell, you get disconnected one way or the other. It is a miracle. So your body is still moving around with everything they are doing, but you're not there. You are there, but not there. Disconnected. That's the way how we survive all this horror. Even they put plastic bags on you and you're choking and... No. Sometimes you go out of the body and you see yourself. It's the way how you start to develop being sensitive in other dimensions. Actually, on your way home, back to the source. When I was coming out of this 11 years, I was completely um, an adult. An adult who was back inwards locking myself up in an atomic bunker, not having any attention to be damaged once again by humans, 
and I was full of hate, meaning full of poison. And I was ready to go in this world to destroy every human being I can get a hold on, a grip on. So coming out of this mess, my mother was in the meanwhile divorced. She was left alone in a little caravan, hungry. I started to take care of my mother in a strange way because she was also betraying me. She couldn't save me. So actually, you, I'm a bit fucked up in the past and later on in life I need really healing and I'm, I'm healed. Still, it's quite difficult to give this testimony. But on the moment I came out, I grew up taking care of my mother, meaning I start to be criminal. I have no um, affection or reason to follow orders or rules or whatever. I was liberating myself from this madhouse and starting to do nasty things in my youth already. I was playing with other children, being soldier, and I chose to be a Nazi on purpose. And I was making this march through the houses where all the old people are living, where they take care of the old people, and I knew they were out of the war. And I did it on purpose. I really start to beat people, to traumatize people because of my hate. Once I nearly killed an adult in that period. In school, same mess. My English was not developed on school. I was always kicked out. I had my diplomas, but I paid for them. Ha! Fuck you all. That was my mentality. So I became an independent entrepreneur and I covered everything I wanted to do because I wanted to destroy. So that means I needed a lot of money. To get access to money, you need to deal. So in the, in the front, I created companies like car dealer, import export, even a fashion line distributing nice clothes for women, you know. It was all covers, covers for the deeper things I did. That was being involved in criminal activities. And I have to tell one thing, all the criminal beings on this world, the normal criminals, so to speak, they hate only one thing, and that's pedophiles. It's only one thing. They can do whatever they want, but on the moment you're talking about child abuse, they ex explode. They really straight want to kill. That's the world I was in, criminals. I have to go back also about the pedophile thing, the, because she told me that there are, were investigations investigations about pedophiles and all the humans who are doing horrible things with children that they assume they are completely dead to do this and that they need this extreme pulses to have something going on. Based on my own experience, I really start to believe it's actually a knowing because it, it was also about my own story, that you're still alive. Even you do the horrible things on this planet, you're still alive. I recognize this, and I, I tell you more about my horrors I created, but the horrors they created on children, they are still alive. Their light is still in them. Their human, the, the love, is still in them. But it's like mine, locked, completely locked in a bunker, atomic bunker. And they are afraid 
of the adults. They stopped, their life was stopping like my life in the beginning. But they are pure, and I'm not defending them, because I think everybody is responsible for their acts on, on, on this planet. But they need, a, they need a gate, they need a bridge to come over. And I want to invite all the people on this planet to come over this bridge of forgiveness. Because there is a whole army of people who want to take care of them, to heal. And of course, there are consequences of coming forward. But it's doable. The point is, they're locked up in their cells. They don't trust adults. And they're still human. In a way, they are human. And they need also affection. And the most safest way to get a bit of affection is through animals or children. I'm not talking now about the satanic part, about the normal part. So, one way or the other, in every human, I believe there is a child who is partly locked or completely locked because we are all we're running through a program. So in a way, who can proclaim on this earth, on this moment, that he is fully the being he was when he is born? Who can claim this? Who can proclaim this on this moment? Who is fully the light represented on earth? Who is the original being without of being programmed, without of being heard? without of being manipulated. The horror we are facing today is our horror. Because the world we are facing today is not because of the perpetrators, the perpetrators, how what? Perpetrators. perpetrators. <laughs> it's about the billions of people who are doing nothing. And it's not pleading guilty. No, 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 no. It's about being unaware. Having said that, I developed myself in a criminal way, covered by shiny import, export, and so on. So I got, on a young age, I'm talking about roughly around 20, I had already these shiny things like cars you can only afford when you are rich, start playing with, well, I, I played the Hollywood show, like the succeeded businessman when I was 20. And then most of them say, well, he has rich parents, of course, because otherwise, who, how can you afford this? But out of all this business, I start also being involved in um, currency trading of um, who was not um, with tax, black money. So I started to be making a little bit of business with money. And then one of the guys in Brussels, who was one of my partners in dealing with currencies, said, hey, you are run around the clock daily with all your business and activities. Why don't you go in the money trading? We have license available and we can make a deal and we did this through offshores, like no, nothing on your name and it uh, could be a nice career for you. <coughs> there was one condition, a warning ahead. You have to put your conscience in the freezer in minus 100 degrees. And I say, no problem. <laughs> hey, I'm nearly dead, so <laughs> no problem. So I became step by step a servant of the big money, step by step. It was still taking some years to come in the higher regions. And I get more and more excitements, like from Russia, 
Secret Service. They printed better dollars, American dollars, than the American dollars who were circulating from the Federal Reserve. Better quality. And they were printed, made, made, in, made in the USSR. And we get the assignment, we get our commissions, and we get the assignment to dump this in the market through bigger drug, drug dealers, uh, people who are dealing with weapons, all kind of criminal activity. Because that was a smoothy way to get um, all these uh, huge amounts of dollars in the market through the illegal channels floating around and it was afterwards it was just a part of the game to uh, have an economic war from Russia, USSR in that time with America and in the opposite way they did the same but I didn't know that in that time so I, as a younger youngster like 24, 25 I was already messing around with economic wars worldwide so after all these um, assignments, they start to spot you. Like, hey, here's a bright guy. He's always knowing his way, like hustling here, hustling there, playing with the rules. And then they start to invite you more and more for higher assignments. And then you start to work for banks, independent. You're doing the dirty work for central banks, for multinationals, for governments, for what they call now terrorist uh, organizations, and all secret services. Hey, secret services? Yes. And then on top, like the peach or the fruit of the cake, churches. Wow, you get the whole palette where the money floats, the big money. And you get the invitation to join in these circles to move all the money they want to move worldwide. To start wars. To start all the misery in this planet. Because there is nearly no misery on this planet in a natural way. It's most of them is created. Because they keep the system running because it's a dualistic system. They make the money only because when it's dualistic. And if we have all the ships, these energy containers they use only to suck, if they are asleep, fine, you can do whatever you want. This is also the mentality of the elite. Well, they are not elite. <laughs> they are not elite. The people I worked for in the end of the days, you're talking roughly about eight, eight and a half thousand people on this world who run the show. And they are like, they are like who I was. Completely afraid, nearly dead, filling up the holes daily, never enough, surfing the monster of greed. The monster of more. And there comes Lucifer in, in the end. Because we are talking here about interdimensional things. This eight, eight and a half thousand became my friends. Because it was really coming home. First time in my life I start to be with humans who understand me and I understood them. Because we, most of them were going through the same hell. They did it in a different way, different bloodlines. But they have also a lot of misery in their lives. Electric caves are a normal thing in the education of this kind of societies. This is not about humans. This is about a very evil dark force who joy, who really enjoy to destroy all life on this planet and it's still on and I was joy enjoying them as well I really and I don't 
say it with regret because I'm going back now in time. Otherwise, it's a fake. I really enjoyed it to have the opportunity to destroy all humans and all life on Earth. Nature was nothing. It was to be destroyed. We were hating everything what represent life, what represent the creator of heaven and earth. Don't ask them, um, don't take this very light. You can't imagine, I understand that, not all can understand this, but this is going on till today. In the end, because I can give you all the details about everything I did in this world, like indirectly I was killing people, like you are in a stealth bomber, dropping bombs. I did this financial wise as missions, like destroying temporary the economy of Italian. And then later on, when you are in the financial market, you listen to the people who are involved and they have a big laugh because some people were killing themselves because their companies were destroyed and they left behind women with children. And we have only a laugh about it. We joined it. That's the world I come out. My turning point was that I was so good in everything I did with my team that I was, in their opinion, ready for the last stage to be invited and um, sacrifice of children. That hits me. That was really going through my bunker. I couldn't handle it. It was hitting me like hell. I didn't go there. And I start to malfunction. And my whole career falls apart. Then, because I go briefly to this one, because you also can see my interviews, they notice this. Then they start to take me out of the system for a while start torching me and they want because everything was in offshore they want everything back because I own them because I made everything through them and they kept reminding me on the contract I signed I didn't sign with blood if I was signing with blood that was the next stage I was dead already but this was a sort of gentleman agreement and I still keep it and I always keep it about not mentioning names of persons, companies and so on. And I'm a man of word. If I give my word, I will give my word forever. And if it's in the dark side or in the light side, it doesn't matter for me. So I came out finally and you can see it in the interviews and then on the end, my, my body was breaking down, heart attack, hospital, da, 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 da. and then the new, then I, I have also uh, out of body experience again to see what they were doing with me. And then back in the body, the first thing I saw was my mother crying, like he is alive again. Then I run through several private hospitals for a year to recover of all the damage even have to set my back straight again then i was for another eight years completely off the screen hiding in several countries on fake identities and after the period of nine years because i even we have the agreements, even I gave them all what they want, I was still um, afraid um, because they promised me to kill the whole bloodline. So my, my wife and my children in that time were also escaping, also hiding, but separate from me. Um, so, so in nine, ye nine years being undercover completely, um, 
out that of that experience, I, I, I noticed how it is to um, miss your children. It's, um, it's horrible to have a child uh, dead, but not knowing where your child is is a bit more torture. So after 11 years, finally, I met my oldest son in that time and I was recovering and I start to be, build up a relation with life. I started to study in theologic way, stern, studying the Quran, the Torah, the so-called Bible, because that's more or less document. There are some satanic pieces involved. And I start to meet the creator of heaven and earth and that saves my life because he was the first one who really, really loves me. And that gives me the enlightenment to continue life because my first act of love was the real desire to kill myself. That was my first act of love, the first signal I was in a transition from death to a life. I want to kill myself in favor of the humans and life. So that was my first act of life, of, of love. So this involves more and more to be a social um, entrepreneur till the day as now it is. And the last point I want to give you is if we want to have liberation, don't look at outside anymore. Don't look at outside anymore. The change will be from inside. We, the people on this planet, have to choose different. Saying we don't want this anymore. It's enough. We can decide for ourselves to stand up to be as one again, unity and diversity, and we can cooperate worldwide with each other. And tools for this are there, because one of the main tools you need to transform is the financial monetary banking system I was coming out. The tools are available, like healthcare, energy, everything is already available on this planet. The only thing we have to do is connect with each other, unite with each other worldwide and say no more. Stand up, be the change yourself and we will be liberating ourselves and our planet and I can promise you, really promise you because I have still a lot of contacts worldwide, the most still in the prison system, the dark forces around them they are screaming because their child inside of this atomic bunker wants to go out in a safe world and we can create this safe world for these heavily damaged children so thank you wow.